Black Light is the newest Liam Neeson action movie out in theaters, directed by the same man who directed Honest Thief and produced The Marksman. Travis Block, a shadowy government agent who specializes in removing operatives whose covers have been exposed, uncovers a deadly conspiracy within his own ranks that reaches the highest echelons of power. It's definitely a Liam Neeson action thriller that we've grown accustomed to. It might not be a straight up action movie, but it is definitely a Liam Neeson action thriller. And the reason why we're going to watch this movie is Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson is the ticket. He is the selling point of the movie. You want to see this dude just kick ass. And I'll come back around to Liam Neeson in a little bit because I love the man, but I do have some criticisms with him in this movie. It's not that it's not that he's giving the same performance that he has in all these other action movies, because he definitely does, but the man is just likable. He's always written in a way where it's just there's something about him that you just know it's like it's like that fatherly or grandfatherly presence, you know? It, that that's Liam Neeson. He's no longer the stern Jedi that was Qui-Gon Jinn. He's now this grandfather-like figure, and that's true in this movie. So I did like Liam Neeson to an extent in this movie. And this movie does have a pretty unique grandfather, granddaughter element to it that I wish was the actual main focal point of the movie. If the movie was just a drama starring Liam Neeson trying to reconnect with his daughter and especially his granddaughter, and it was just an hour and a half, two hour drama, I think I would have loved this movie. It all depends on the execution. Something that Blacklight does not have, but I think I would have liked it. And uh, as you could probably tell, the rest of this movie is just complete ass. Might as well just change the title of this movie to Asslight, because it was ass. I said I was going to loop back around to Liam Neeson, so here we are. The loop, the full circle, is now complete. Like I said, I love the man. I love Liam Neeson. I don't necessarily have a problem with it being the same exact thing that we've seen from Liam Neeson for the past, what? I don't know, when did Taken come out? 2008? So yeah, for the past 14 years now, I mean, the dude said he was going to retire from action movies, and he still hasn't. So I know what to expect when I'm going into a Liam Neeson action movie, so I can't really criticize the movie for being one and the same, although it doesn't stick out in the pool of Liam Neeson action movies. They're all interchangeable to me. I mean, you could tell me that this was The Commuter, Unknown, the Marksman, Cold Pursuit, Minus the Snow. You can tell me it was Honest Thief because honestly, this movie was a thievery. It was highway robbery of thieving from me. And that thievery was my time. You can have most of the same movie as long as there's different elements to it. But this was just, it just felt like it was just a Saturday afternoon for Liam Neeson. I hate to use the word boring, but it was boring as shit. This was such a poorly made movie that I just sat there. I was like, how is this the same director as Honest Thief? A movie that I actually sort of somewhat liked. I didn't, you know, I didn't hate Honest Thief, but going from that to this, just sitting there, I was like, what am I watching? But like I said, before I went off on that tangent, it's Liam Neeson. The man, what is he now, 70? The man definitely should start to retire from action movies, or if he's gonna continue to make action movies, hire a stunt double, because if he continues to do his own stunts, at his age, it is really slowing him down. He looked really slow and he had to pack some punches to people. When you see these younger guys trying to shoot him real quick or punch him or kick him real quick and Liam Neeson is just like... And there were many times where it looked bad. It's really starting to slow down as, as he pushes 70. There's weird editing in this movie as well. Like, there's a lot of zooms that don't enhance the scene at all. The scenes weirdly, like, fizz in and fizz out. Like, kind of like they're phasing out. Like, you know, like, Ghost from Ant-Man. It does that weird effect that, uh, if you watch something like Man on Fire... It has that weird effect that some scenes have where it looks like it's like fizzing out. What did that add to the movie? It didn't add anything. It's not like he's thinking back or having flashbacks or anything. Maybe if it was a flashback scene, that would work. It didn't work in this movie. Couple that with some other awkward editing. The scenes just feel like they're cut really short and should be extended. And then it just goes into something else that isn't even related to what we just saw even though what we're watching now 
loops back around to the main plot, everything comes full circle in this movie. It's strange editing and pacing, and unfortunately with this movie, the director, Mark Williams, has no idea how to stage tension or suspense. So all of the action just seems like it's there for action's sake. And that's not a good thing. For a great action movie, or even a solid action movie, make sure that the stakes are there, that the tension is high, that the suspense is realized. And this movie doesn't do it at all, especially if you watch the trailer, because the trailer gives away essentially the entire movie. Like, you know the twists and turns. You know what's going on in this greedy government cover-up. It's nothing that should be surprising to you or, or anything like that. There are some laughable, laughable bad scenes, especially in the beginning. There was one where it's a crowd of people in a standoff against two cops, and then they all raise their guns and point at the cops. <laughs> I just died laughing in the theater. I don't know what, I don't know why I found that funny. I just probably thought that the execution of it was hilarious. Hilariously bad, I guess. And the dialogue, oh, that is rough dialogue. I don't think I've seen a Liam Neeson movie with this bad of dialogue in a long time. Man, oh, and the characters spew nonsense after nonsense, and the movie tries to make it sound like it's smart investing dialogue when it's not. It's really some of the most bland dialogue you will ever hear in an action movie. Out of all of Liam Neeson's action movies or action thrillers, whatever you want to call them, this is the most predictable I've seen in a long time. I didn't even enjoy this. Like, even the action itself wasn't well directed. It felt very tepid and uninspired. The action sequences in this movie feel like they're this grand spectacle when they're really so much smaller than that. Everything feels so minuscule. At least if the action was more exciting and better cut, because there's a lot of quick cut editing in many moments where I said, what the hell is going on? I think I could have enjoyed this movie a little bit more. But hey, you know what? Somebody gets taken. It's taken 986, so somebody does get taken. I'll say you'll enjoy ass lights if you like the taste of stale popcorn. So, Ass Lights, have you guys seen it? It's the new Liam Neeson action movie. Whatever you thought of it, drop me some feedback in the comment section below. I'll leave my link to my website in the description below as well. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.